Let's get it, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the bullpen. He's back in the bullpen today. We have Mr. John Burnett. He is a Republican strategist, financial industry professional with over 20 years of experience in risk management and a university professor. Good to have you back on the show, sir. How are you? I'm doing well, thanks. Good to be here. Let's talk about the Republican primary field. And we're going to contextualize some of the, I guess, ideology of people like Ron DeSatan. Uh, and others <laughs> who are running campaigns contrary to their actual delivery. I don't want to presume what you know or believe about DeSantis and others who are in this primary, Trump and his tactics. So if you would give us your overview and then I will respond. Well, this segment is only 13 minutes and we have about 15 Republican candidates, man. Can we get it all in? We can try, but you're gonna have to pay attention to the ones <laughs> that are polling at at least 1%. Because most of them aren't even polling at 1%. Okay, so let's, we can narrow it down. All right, we can narrow it down now. There you go. Well, you know what the thing is, is that uh, interestingly enough, I thought that we might actually be here at this point in terms of the number of candidates that would throw their hat in, in the ring, so to speak, given uh, that 2016 was the same scenario. And arguably, when you look at even 2020 in terms of the number of people on the Democratic side that actually uh, threw their name in the hat, they never reached 15. But I think the more the merrier, and I think it'll help get the message out. Well, each person get their message out. Uh, it'll be easier to your point, Dr. Ritchie, if you, if you poll above 3%. Uh, you get more media time. So we'll see where it goes. We already know that DeSantis and Trump will uh, be the headliners along with Tim Scott and uh, Ambassador Naley, uh, uh, Haley. Well, let me ask you this, because <laughs> I find that interesting. I actually think Chris Christie is going to um, have some something to say. And even though his negatives is interesting because he has the highest negatives in the Republican primary of anyone running. His negatives are higher than anybody else's. But he's also the person who's consolidated a particular, let's say, faction of the Republican Party. And nobody else is connecting to that particular faction. And we're talking about individuals who are just disillusioned with Trumpism, disillusioned with the style of DeSantis and others. And then you have Tim Scott, who has a very similar lane. I don't know how. Numeric it would be for him in the Republican primary, but he has a similar lane, a lane that nobody else has. He's talking about unity coalition building, connecting to people based on um, talking uh, talking things that are not as though they are. All right, so that's kind of that's the kind of campaign he's running. Do you see room in the Republican primary? And I want you to really think about where you all are right now. Do you see room in the Republican primary for either a an anti-Trumper? getting the nod or B, a person who literally is not campaigning against anyone else and only talking about what things should be like without providing much context or policy. That's Tim Scott. Tim Scott has a very hopeful message that lacks context. You think it's room for one of them to get the nomination? You know, in this modern day political arena, Mm-hmm. Uh, it's hard for me to say that it's impossible. Okay. Uh, I'll say that it is possible to the extent that th- there are there are millions of people, uh, whether you talk about the right or the left, that are how can I say they're hurting, but they also want to hear policy ideas, and they also want optimism. And they don't want to see a lot of infighting. Um, so I think there is a possibility. Now, to what it, what number or percentage? Not sure, but I think there's a at least a double digit um, opportunity for the right person. Now it has to be the right person with the right message, because those individuals also want to hear consistency. Not just that you're not attacking across the, you know, across the way within the mm-hmm. same aisle, 
But they want to hear consistency of message, ideas, and so forth. And they want to see how well other people are coalescing around those principles or values. What are the ideas here? What ideas debate are they having? Tell me. Well, well, I think you know the gate just opened, if you will, and 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 as we go into July, which is right around the corner, and move into August. Now, August is going to be, uh, for the lack of a better term, uh, the UFC cage matches <laughs> with respect to the uh, Republican debates. Right, and and we don't, we still don't know at this point how many of the fifteen will qualify in terms of, you know, reaching the polling number requirement. But professor, listen, all due respect, I'm asking, what has the ideas debate been thus far? Because you've had individuals running since the end of January. You're now uh, middle of the year. Okay, it's gone. Half of the whole year is gone. Can you articulate what they are actually debating? What are they they saying they will deliver differently than the person next to them? Well, many of the people um, that uh, that you have uh, mentioned and others down the list, the first step they're trying. To, many of them are introducing uh, their 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 candidacy. To all 50 states. But how do you wait a minute? How do you introduce so, your candidacy without introduce without introducing what your so, what your candidacy stands for? So 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 what, so what I'm saying, many people people like to know what you what policies you'll be pushing forward. Correct. Which I'll what get are to they pushing? Second, for? but at the same time, they want to hear your credentials and 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 they also want to know who you are. So you have to do all three okay. at the same time. Wait a minute. So, so people need to know the credentials of Chris Christie. Hold on, sir. They. They, they've been talking about their credentials. Chris Christie's been talking about his credentials. Tim yeah, Scott talks about his credentials. Chris Christie's at like one one percent, and maybe one another poll maybe at two percent. But I'm Tim talking Scott? about other people. Well, so there's been some some polls, especially uh, specifically in in the early states that have Tim Scott at seven percent. Okay. Uh, same right. thing. Now, with Tim, it is. What what colleges did Tim Scott go to? Uh, I'm not sure which college. Exactly. Nobody knows. <laughs> I don't even the, know what college you went to, and you have a doctor. doctor. Yeah, I got more than so, one doctor. I mean, and by I've the been way. on the show several times with you. Yes, so sir. I think, I, I think that's a poor my point. A poor no, it's it's your point. It's the point you made to me. I'm making it back to you. But the I'm point saying, is, if you're telling me that these individuals have not introduced ideas because they've been talking about their credentials, and you're not able to articulate. A, hold a, on, dear brother. A, I will. I will finish. Degree. I will. That's what you said. You said you're. They're telling you their credentials. What qualifies them to be in this particular office? Training, education, job experience, etc. That qualifies you for particular roles. I don't think if you can't articulate what these individuals this is have not, said no, in no, their no, credentialing, no, 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 as you have you're submitted, going down them, a silly, you're going down a silly, silly. No, path. you made a silly ass statement that they're simply going to tell people their credentials. Meaning, they're if they're if they're if you're a legisl legislator, what what legislation have you passed? That ties into, let's say, jobs, education, things of that nature. What legislation? If you were an administrator, okay, all right, brother. As, so as let me go ahead and ask you a specific question. Okay, I got you. Nature, right? So, got you. so, so talk about specifically, I got you specifically. Then, what legislation did Tim Scott pass that uh, created jobs? Well, one, he he was the the one of the pioneers of the opportunity zones, and we know. Whoa! That. Are you serious, dear brother? Yes, opportunities. Yes, as Did well as oh, okay, as, as well as as Hold well on. as the First Step Act and things of that nature. Oh, okay, that I, were okay, very that's beneficial. that's a um, that's a jobs bill. Now he voted against it under Obama, but let's talk about what you just said in reference to opportunity zones. Do you know what opportunity zones are, dear brother? Do you own uh, buildings? I I know what opportunity zones are. Explain yeah. it to. Me. Well, opportunity zones for because I know we're running running on a, on a hard 13 minute stop. But the thing is, is that essentially um, areas that are depressed economically, right? Individuals who who will receive a, a deferred tax break can invest in those areas. And the reason why the key word is deferred, because we know. Gentrification, a lot of investors will come in, develop, and then immediately take the investment out, right? Yeah. Flip, if you will. 
Yeah. Opportunity work opportunity zones attract that investment and mm -hmm. then investors cannot pull that money out right away. They have to wait, let's say, you know, I think in some instances it's like 10 years. Well, so that's not so let me go ahead and explain to you what an opportunity zone is. Uh, opportunity zones are allowed to be created per government, per state government, and then it's localized based on region. The federal dollars will come to that state. The state then has to break those federal dollars up into regional uh, distribution. And it all is different per region. They get to set their right. own rules. And so based what that means is when you look at areas. Based, based upon the facts of how the program has worked, 97% of individuals who take advantage of opportunity zone funding are not citizens of the local community as they would make you believe. They are simply investors who have the prerequisite economic ability to invest based on their model. Because in order to even get into the room for an opportunity zone, you have to at least come with $50,000. And yeah, many have it set at $150,000. <laughs> the point is people think it that creates an opportunity capital, for sir. individuals inside of the community and it does not. It does no, not, no. sir. I would be happy if it did no, so that no, the parameters no, no, are defined based on the you community. Are grossly distorting. No, I'm not. I'm 100% correct, dear brother. Capital, it, it, your opportunity, opportunity zones matches capital investment. That's one with, model of an opportunity zone. The bottom line is it does not create opportunity for citizens in that local community. So, what are the economic depressed opportunities? It's building housing. It's also building manufacturing, is building business in those areas, hence creating jobs as well as housing. So those are two things that, that when you look at a, at a lot of depressed economic areas, uh, both white and black, but we're talking about the urban community at this juncture. A lot of, a lot of those, those areas don't have housing, don't have jobs. All right, now so let me ask you this, we're, we're out of, we're so out of time, but I wanna pose this question to you. All right, Donald Trump and Republicans rolled back the protections for opportunity zones that were in place to make sure that what I just described to you did not happen and abuses were limited. They decided to roll back those restrictions which increased opportunity zone funding going to traditional investors up to the tune of 97%. The program was created for individuals who did not have access to that kind of capital, lived in that local community, gave a damn about the local that's community, inaccurate. and encouraged that's, that's growth in the local that's community. That's completely inaccurate. How? Tell me. You, Tell me why I'm inaccurate. You're, Tell you're, me where. Where am I inaccurate? You're, and look at the results of those opportunity zones. It depends. With, with, you with, have with, opportunity with, zones that have had a, a cost with, negative for no, a community. No, no, you're, you're distorted. I encourage people to go, not to just listen to this show. No, I encourage right? you to, to read. Now, what what go information on do you the have? Website and look at. There's a what website? Why under the Trump administration, more jobs were created, more investment and things. But what website are you telling people to go to? Into certain areas. You're completely what professor? distorting. Professor, what website? Yes. Dear brother, I'm trying to I'm trying to give you a moment to tell people what website to go to. Where? There's a lot. Google, Google right. opportunity I zones see. so you can okay, see go to the propaganda how page. they right, work and the benefits of, uh, uh, of Here's the what. opportunity zones. Here's what, gotcha, we got it brother. Not, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna the, tell people where I think they need to go to. Uh, go, go wherever. Gotcha. Go wherever right the professor says go. Now, this professor is telling you to look at the Bloomberg report in 2020 of opportunity zones, and it's called the problem with opportunity zones. Is it is a fair analysis across the board, gives you the exact language that I just provided. All right, dear brother, I appreciate you being on the show. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Goodbye.